Now we understand the process by which the finite volume solver derives a set of algebraic equations representing the conservation equations, conservation of mass and momentum in our case. So the problem reduces to solving a system of algebraic equations. But there is an additional complication. And the additional complication is that the algebraic equations are nonlinear. To see why we get nonlinear terms in the algebraic equations, let's go to the momentum equation, which has nonlinear terms. And in our case, the integral form of the momentum equation looks like that, as we saw before. That term represents the net momentum outflow out of the control volume that we pick. That's the net uh, pressure force on the control uh, surface. And that's the viscous force on the control surface. That's a nonlinear term because we have a product of velocity times a velocity component. Um, so you have a product of two unknowns, um, and that's, that's nonlinear. To see what kind of nonlinear terms we will get in the algebraic equation um, from, from this, this uh, term in the integral, um, let's go back to our pet example and look at the, the same cell. And we need to do the integration in four parts, right? That's what that, so we'll do it over this phase, this phase, this phase, and this phase. And we'll just look at how we do it for this phase. Um, and then, you know, we can use a similar procedure for the other phases. And when we evaluate that integral over that phase, essentially what we are computing is the rate of momentum outflow through that phase. We're looking at the momentum, rate of momentum flow in the x direction. Let's say we do it in the x direction at the phase between cells 1 and 2. That is equal to rho is a constant. We're looking at the x component of velocity. And so we need the velocity over this phase. And we'll assume that it's constant and equal to the, um, the value at the center like we did before. So that'll give us u, 1, 2. v dot n, that's the normal component of the velocity at that phase. And again, and that's in the normal is in the x direction. So that's just u and again we'll assume that um, that's you know that's constant over that surface so we'll get another u12 essentially we are taking this this and these as constants and so the integral applies only over ds and that'll give us the area of that um, of that face and that's equal to delta y times 1 in the direction normal to the screen. And we can take that as 1 without loss of generality, because that will appear in all the terms. And there is an error introduced. So I'll say error 1. And that's because we are assuming that you know the, the integral over, um, let's say, the velocity over that uh, phase is just um, equal to the value at the center. And that's similar to the error that we had um, when we we're doing the mass balance. And u12, and the velocity here, we'll assume, you know, we'll just interpolate between 1 and 2 like we did before. So rho u, so this velocity over here is just u1 plus u2 divided by 2. And similarly over here, so I'll just square that times delta y. Uh, and I won't write the 1. And then we have the error from before, which is error 1. 
But we have an additional error in you know, assuming that the value here is equal to the average of the value here and here. And we'll quantify these errors um, a little bit later on. That's error two. And when we square that out, the kinds of nonlinear terms we are going to get, so we're going to get u1 squared. So the nonlinear terms we'll get in the algebraic equation We'll have a u1 squared term, we will have a u2 squared term, and we will have a cross product u1, u2. All of these are nonlinear terms. So th then the question is how to solve a nonlinear system of algebraic equations. This is done by linearizing the nonlinear terms about guess values. So one would linearize u1 squared about a guess value of u1 and so on. And then solving iteratively, updating the guess at each time. And when the iterations converge, we have a reasonably good solution to the set of nonlinear system of algebraic equations. So we'll take a look at how we linearize about the guess values next um, and then subsequently how the iterative solution procedure uh, proceeds.